Hey everybody, Richard Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up your Pi Zen cooling fan case for the Raspberry Pi and install your Raspberry Pi inside of it. Let's get started. All right, so here is the Pi Zen aluminum cooling fan case for the Raspberry Pi 4 from Electro Cookie. So first thing we're going to do here to set this up is we're going to set some of our parts aside and we're going to start opening up these little packets. So you can see we have screws in some of these and I'm just going to kind of neatly lay these out over here on the side so they're out of the way. And you want to make sure that you don't just throw everything together into a pile. You want to kind of keep them separate as they were provided to us. So these are actually some spacers and some feet here. So I'm going to keep those separate as well. I'll actually leave these intact for now, but I do need the screwdriver out of this. Now, if you have a regular screwdriver that you typically use for stuff like this, you can use that. Um, this is going to be though a flathead, not a Phillips head. So it's worth mentioning if you have a regular screwdriver that you prefer to use. So the first thing we're gonna start with today is our Raspberry Pi 4 computer board. And then we're going to grab four of our feet. So these are these little black feet here. And if you look at them closely, there's actually a little hole in the center, which is where we're going to thread our screw through. So these actually line up just like this. They sit underneath each of the four holes on a Raspberry Pi 4 computer board. And then we're going to put one of these smaller black screws into the top here, and it's gonna screw right through and lock these feet in place. So we're provided with this flathead screwdriver here, which does work. You'll notice that these are Phillips heads, but it does fit in there uh, quite nicely regardless. So you can use that, or if you just have a regular Phillips head screwdriver like I have right here, I use this for all of my Raspberry Pi projects. You can use that as well. The only thing I will mention is this is a uh, magnetic tip screwdriver right here, but it doesn't work on here because obviously it's the... Uh, wrong material for these screws. So it does make it a little bit challenging to get them in. What I find works best is if we just thread that screw through the hole first, just apply a little pressure with your finger or thumb and just get it started like this. That is literally all you need to do. You don't even need to use a screwdriver if you don't want, but I do like just holding it like that and then just giving it one little quick tighten at the end there. You don't want to over tighten these because this is plastic. So you certainly could over tighten it and do some damage to it or strip it and whatnot. So definitely uh, be careful that you don't do that. So again, I'm going to just start this one with my finger here, just applying some pressure and just screwing the foot right onto the screw itself. So you might run into some that are a little bit harder than others. This one's giving me a little trouble, trouble, but I did start it at least. So I'll just apply a little pressure like that, take my screwdriver and just give that a few twists until it's fully locked in. Again, make sure that you don't over tighten. So once it you know, starts to feel tight and I have to like strain to tighten it, that's where you wanna stop. So you're gonna do that for each of the four holes on your Raspberry Pi. So once you have all four of those on there, you're gonna notice that this will sit you know, right on your tabletop or desk or whatever you're using nicely. Um, shouldn't be loose or anything, so it shouldn't be wobbly. If it is, then you haven't tightened it enough, but everything's looking good here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna locate the bag with our large heat sink in here. So that is located right here. And we're going to press this down right over this portion of our Raspberry Pi 4 computer board. So I'm going to just Peel back this sticker here. So we expose the sticky side, just like that. And we're gonna just firmly press this into place. So it's gonna be large and it's going to, you know, kind of hang over on all sides, just kind of even it out so the same amount hangs over on each side. And it's just gonna sit just like that, very simple. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our enclosure here we're gonna take the yellowish, greenish piece off of here. Now, you may have this with both sides on the front and back. Just remove those so it looks like this. And we're gonna locate the side here that has our ports on it. So here is where our Raspberry Pi's um, USB ports would hang out and ethernet. So we're going to take our Raspberry Pi now. We're gonna just kind of slide it in sideways into place so that all of those line up perfectly just like that. And now if we just let it sit, you'll notice that everything hangs out just the way it's supposed to. Everything is just 100% perfect along here. I'll lift it up so you can see a little bit better. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna just kind of flip this over while still holding it in place. 
and you'll notice that there are four screw holes on the bottom of this enclosure. So those line up with the feet that we installed onto our Raspberry Pi computer board. So we're gonna take the same screws that we used to secure these into place, and we're gonna now screw them from the bottom of the enclosure up into the feet of the Raspberry Pi computer board. So as you get started here, you can just do this by hand first, just to get it started. You don't have to worry about socking it down just yet. As long as you get them in so they're actually holding in place, then you can come back and tighten them after. So now I do find that if you get one in place, they generally all start to kind of line up for you. So I got that one over here in. I didn't thread it in super tight. I want to keep it loose so there is a little bit of play here. And then I'll go up here to the other corner. I usually work in diagonals. So this one I was able to just thread by hand. And now I'll go in with the screwdriver and tighten that up. And again, make sure you're not over tightening because you can certainly strip these and then you're um, totally out of luck. So now the other two should be perfectly lined up now and they are, so I don't have to wrestle with those. It's just the uh, initial two that usually give you a little bit of trouble. Only downside here is the fact that these are not magnetic, so you kind of have to hold the screws in place. Uh, until you get them partially threaded in. All right, so all four of those are locked in. We can see everything is lined up really nicely here. Same thing here. All four screws are protruding from the bottom, which is perfect. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna locate this panel, which has this little design on it. And this is where our cooling fan is going to get installed. But it's a little hard to see here, but there is actually a protective coating on here. So we just have to peel back this little uh, protective strip that goes across the entire front, just like that, which keeps this from getting scratched in transit and whatnot. And same thing is on the other side. We're gonna just work our way up from this corner here. And there we go. All right, so I've removed the coating from both sides. You can see it's super shiny now. And we're going to actually turn this away from us so the Pi Zen logo is backwards. And then we're going to locate our cooling fan, which I have right here. And this is going to get mounted on just like this. So we want to make sure that this label that you see right here is actually facing in. So it'll go just like this. And then we're going to locate these little metal pieces right here, little gold pieces. So we're going to take our black screw, we're going to thread it through the front. So it pops through like that. And then we need to take these gold pieces and kind of thread them onto the back of the screw. So this can be a little bit tricky. It's one of those things where the first one is always gonna give you a hard time until the cooling fan kind of gets secured in place. And once it's in place, you're gonna see that it, you know, is nicely locked in and there's not much wiggle room there. So once you get one in, you gotta do the other corner. That's typically how I like to work. So I'm gonna take the long black screw again, thread it through that opposite corner, grab my gold piece, and I'm going to just screw that in as much as I can first. Once it's in most of the way, I'll just flip this over, hold the back side again, and whoops, try to just tighten this screw head into place. So that's in there, this is locked in. Two screws is really enough, but we have all four, so might as well just lock it in. All right, so once all four screws are there, you want to make sure that this is locked in, there's no movement or anything like that. Again, make sure that your Pi Zen logo is you know, facing the opposite way, so looking from the outside, everything looks good on here. So what we're going to do now is, we are going to install this into our enclosure. So we have the enclosure right here. We're gonna turn this so the ports are actually facing to the right. And this is gonna go into place just like this. Again, make sure that your Pi Zen logo is facing right side up. You don't wanna have this you know, inverted and facing down or anything like that. You'll notice that we have holes up here in the bottom and top corners. 
you want to just make sure that those line up with the holes behind them in the actual enclosure. And again, I'll just pull that away so you can see where those are. You can see right there and there. And now we can actually just lay this down just like that so we don't have to wrestle with holding it in place. Just let the weight of it sit down there. And we're going to take our small black screws and just sock those into place in those corners. Now once that's done, we're going to lift this up, turn it over, and we're going to locate our GPIO pin board, which is right here in this packet. We can remove that slides out all in one piece. Make sure that there's nothing hanging off of it. We do have this little uh, paper right here. We're gonna set that aside. And we're gonna take our cables from our cooling fan and we are going to attach them right here in the bottom right corner. So with this facing towards you, you can see the Pi Zen logo is facing us. We are going to first put the red connection on the connection closest to that Pi Zen logo. So it's going to go in just like that and it just firmly clicks into place. And then our black one is going to be the next connection again, furthest away from that Pi Zen logo in the center. So just like that, red and then black on the outside. Now we're going to take our gold tips here again, and we're going to put this on the front and we'll take another one of our small black screws and we're gonna thread that into the back side. So you can just kind of do this however you feel comfortable. I like to put the screw in first and then just twist that gold tip onto it. If it's giving you a hard time, then you want to kind of back it out because it's really easy to cross thread these and you don't want that. It should just screw into place. It's gonna be a little bit tough at first, but you wanna make sure that it's not you know, giving you too much of a fight. Otherwise, it's a clear indication that it's probably cross-threaded. So I got the first one started. Now I'm gonna do the second one, which goes right over here on the other side. I'm gonna put that in and then take this gold piece here and thread that on. And now once you get both of them started, you can just flip it over, apply a little pressure with your finger and screw that into place. So once we have those locked in, we're going to just sit this down right on our pins on the actual Raspberry Pi 4. So you wanna just kind of look at this closely, make sure that everything is lined up there. You can see from the bottom, everything is. You definitely don't want to run the risk of you know, applying pressure if these aren't lined up perfectly because these pins are super fragile and can easily be damaged if misaligned. So what I like to do is just kind of rock this back and forth like that. And that's going to get that connection on there nice and tight. Just go from side to side, applying pressure evenly as you go. So you can see there's no gaps down here now. Everything is locked in place. So we can just set that aside. And now we're going to take our other panel, just like this. And that is going to go so it's perfectly lined up. So we're going to flip it over like this. And it'll go right on there. So you can see here... This piece lines up perfectly with that circle in the back. So same deal here. This actually has that coating on here as well. So you want to strip that from both sides. And again, just make sure that it's lined up perfectly. Put it face down like that. And we can put our four screws in to secure this. And again, you want to make sure that you go with those four small black screws and just work your way across those diagonals like we did on the other side. And now if we lift this up, you notice that we have two more screw holes there. We can apply those final two small black screws there as well. They're gonna line up right along with that gold piece that we installed. So once those are locked in here, we can flip this over and you're gonna notice that we have those four screws visible here, and we have this little strip of feet. So we're gonna just peel these off and we're gonna actually install them right next to the feet. So you just put it there, 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 and there. And you can put them wherever you want on here. I just like to keep them in the corners. We'll flip this over and you can see that they're non-skid. So I have a pretty slick wood desk right here and they're not budging at all. I'm actually shaking the entire desk. 
So that's always good because you don't want anything that's going to be slippery. Like if this was here, it slides quite nicely. We don't want this sliding. We don't want to risk it, you know, falling off or anything like that. So it stays in place really nicely. So one last thing that we can do here, and that is we're going to flip this over. So we have this side visible and we have this little piece of paper here that we actually set aside. So if we actually peel this back, you're going to notice that this is actually a GPIO sticker on here. So this gives you an idea as to what pins go where on here. So if you want to attach anything later on, you have a little map to be able to, um, you know, tell you exactly where everything is. So it's really hard to see. But if we look at it here, now that it's off of that strip, you can see that it is labeled quite nicely. So you're going to just flip this over. So the sticky side is obviously facing down and that's gonna go and fall into place right here. So uh, you have to be super precise. You wanna just kind of line it up as best you can and stick that down into place. And you can see here that now each of these GPIO pins is properly labeled and you just wanna match them up so obviously the last one here lines up with the last one there. Same thing down here. And if they're a little bit off, nobody's going to know that off of looking at this except for you. So, um, you know, don't pull your hair out trying to get that perfect. It ends up looking pretty nice in the end. So we can flip this over and we're pretty much good to go here. So we're going to power this on, test it out. All right, so here I have my micro HDMI cable. So this is going to go into the port that is closest to the power supply. So I have power supply here. I'm going to put it right into this one. This is going directly to my TV monitor. And then we're going to take our power supply and we are going to plug that directly into the power supply portion of this. So you can see that it lights up red here. We have the fan running nice and cool already. You can hear it humming in there. And this, it's hard to see in here. I'm going to actually kill the lights in a second, but you can see that it lights up really quite nicely. So I'm going to kill the lights. You can see the color change on here, but it's purring right along. I'm going to flip to the other side. You can see the lights on the back, but let's cut the lights in the room so you guys can see exactly how nicely this uh, comes together. All right, so you can see how this nicely glows in the dark. We have a color change here on the actual cooling fan, so it, you know, slowly morphs into a different color every few seconds. So we're back to blue right now. Going into like a purplish color. I know it's a little bit hard to see in this video, but uh, the colors are much brighter in person. And just the lights behind the, um, you know, shaded plexiglass look really sharp too. Nice coloration here on the back side. So really a sharp and efficient cooling fan case. All right, so as you can see from this tutorial video today, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how to set up your Pi Zen cooling fan case and install your Raspberry Pi 4 computer board inside of it. So the biggest thing to take away from this video though is my advice to just be super careful when making your connections. You don't want to bend any connections, especially with that GPIO um, connection. There's obviously a lot of pins on there. They're super fragile. Just go nice and slow. Be super careful and with any of your screws, there's a lot of screws that have to be installed to connect various components of this cooling fan case together. Just make sure that you don't over tighten anything because you can easily strip them and then you run into a serious problem because there's no other options to fix anything if you strip anything and over tighten and all of that. So just be super careful. If you have any questions about this setup process or how to install your Raspberry Pi into this cooling fan case, hit me up in the comments section. Always happy to help you guys out any way I possibly can. That's going to do it for today. You know the deal. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, smash the like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to the Retro Pie Guy YouTube channel. I do a ton of different videos based on retro gaming, product reviews, gameplay demos, tutorials like this one, Forgotten Favorites YouTube series every Monday and Thursday night. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching.